en 1952, Edgar Mitchell a terminé son étude sur l'administration des entreprises et s'est inscrit à la marine américaine. Il a été formé et est devenu pilote d'avion de reconnaissance. En 1958, il assume, en tant qu'officier aérien du Air Développement Scadron 5, des tâches dans le domaine de la recherche. Le 4 avril 1966, il a été embauché à la NASA. Il est devenu pilote du module lunaire de la mission Apollo 14, la troisième mission qui a réussi à amener l'homme sur la Lune en 1971. I would say that my parents and my grandparents were all pioneers. They came, went across in the United States, my great-grandparents went across the United States uh, over a hundred years ago uh, to help settle the West in the United States. It was still, it was still far, west. Far, far west. And my father was born right after the Wright brothers made the first airplane flights. And I went to the moon. So from covered wagons to going to the moon in under 100 years, that was the history of my family, exploring. And so that was, that was kind of the incentive. My parents were very, very encouraging of me to explore, uh, to become well-educated, uh, to succeed at whatever I did. So I had great, uh, great, had great uh, incentive there uh, for my parents to be the best I could be at whatever I wanted to be. And that was going to the moon. Well, what we are discovering these days, thanks to the new telescopes and the Hubble telescope in space, and seeing how huge the universe is, many times bigger than we ever thought it was. And uh, frankly, seeing that we, the evidence is now strong that we have been visited by alien civilizations. And so, the idea that there are human, that there is life throughout the universe, and we're not the most advanced species around, and so eventually we know that our sun will burn out, and we're going to have to become an advanced species going off out of this solar system. So I, my thinking at this point is on the frontier. What do we need? What science do we need? I'm primarily interested in science. What science do we need to become a spacefaring civilization, continue our spacefaring, and to be able to explore our solar system and beyond, and to go outside of our solar system, and to create a, a civilization that's sustainable long enough to do all of that? That's my interest. Then to go where humans have never been, to look around, take pictures, collect data, and come back and tell the people what it's all about. And that's what explorers do. And that's what I did going to the moon. That's what I'm continuing to do with the idea of going be into our solar system and beyond. I grew up in an area called Roswell, New Mexico, which has a history uh, back in 1947 of a major uh, UFO sighting in that area, and I grew up there. Now, I was going off to college at the time, and on one day, there was an announcement in the local paper that an alien craft had crashed near Roswell. And the next day, that was said, no, that's wrong. Uh, it was a weather balloon that had crashed. Uh, but after I went to the moon years later and came back and went back to Roswell, and that area, my hometown area, to talk and to give speeches and to meet people. Some of the old timers who were there at the time uh, pulled me aside and said, we want to tell you about our experience with the alien crash of 1947. And we have been shushed up. We could not talk about it. The military threatened us if we did. And so they proceeded to tell me how they were involved in that particular incident. I cannot personally validate any specific things with certainty, but from what I understand in the lore, there are several species of alien creatures that have come here, and from my understanding, some of them are very benevolent, some of them are 
very much helping us try to evolve. There appear to be several at least. I don't know how many. Okay. Uh, I have been told at least four. Now, some of them seem to be more evolved than others. Uh, have you heard of the Phoenix Lights evidence? The Phoenix? Yes. Okay. I happen to be on the phone with a, with a contact in Phoenix at the time the Phoenix Lights incident took place, which was a huge uh, spacecraft flying over the town of Phoenix. The, the, reason, the reason I can be so certain, so positive, is that I'm a scientist and many of the people that uh, I have talked with and believe and have written about this are very good scientists too. <laughs> that means it's the same thing, a relationship, political relationships external to ourselves. There's only rumors of that. I have no <clears throat> first-hand uh, information that I can point to and say that part is true. Uh, I know that there are people that would like to do that. I know there are people who are prepared to do that. How, and even there, though also, there is lore about certain people, certain military people uh, included, who have gone, who have been taken by the ETs back to their home planet for study. But whether any of that is true, I don't know. You, you don't give up with this interest. Yes, of exploring. Now, keep going.